Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trail Pass. So the machine in front of you is a Kawasaki Mule Pro MX and it's actually the newest machine in our lineup and one of Kawasaki's newest side-by-sides, at least in the utility division. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, been following us, you may have seen that we had a Mule 610 and uh, that was a much, much smaller machine and actually a lot older design. Uh, we decided to trade up uh, to this machine uh, for a number of reasons, and today we're going to do a walk around kind of explaining some of those reasons. So uh, this machine is ours. Uh, my dad just bought it, and uh, the reason he wanted it is for our piece of property. We have kind of a hunting area. Uh, we do a lot of trail maintenance and that sort of thing, and uh, we kind of agreed that this is the perfect machine for that. So. Uh, there are a couple things that we did aftermarket to this, but most of this that I'll be showing you today is how this machine comes. So that uh, front bumper up there is standard. You have these 25 inch Duro tires, uh, pretty aggressive design here. They are standard as well. Uh, this is not quite a base model machine. It does have power steering and for 2021, they do have a non-power steering model as well. Uh, but the only option here that was bought with this thing was power steering. But again, that uh, bumper comes standard, the tires come standard. If you go up to the LE trim, you can get an aluminum rim, but we figured for up here in the mountain, the steel wheels will do just fine. Uh, we did add a winch up here in the front and the roof, uh, plastic roof. This is about $100 straight from the Kawasaki dealer. Uh, that seems really reasonable for what you're getting. Uh, we also added this rear light. Uh, it's kind of a cargo light. Uh, shine down here into the bed and also kind of behind you for when you want to back up and then we went to tractor supply and we got one of these horse mats that you'd lay down in the back of a horse trailer cut that to fit and that is our bed mat now uh, they do have all the lights accessories and bed mats uh, that we have here you could have gotten directly from kawasaki uh, but this is much much cheaper version of a bed mat obviously uh, our rear light uh, it mounted up really nice but this was just an amazon light uh, we're really, really pleased with it. And we went ahead and ordered a switch from Amazon as well. It popped in the factory hole and looks really, really nice. So uh, a little bit about the Pro MX Mule as opposed to the 610. Now, again, the 610 has been around since really the 80s. And uh, again, that's a lot smaller machine. It didn't have nearly as much horsepower. It's also roughly a 50 inch machine. This is kind of considered a 60 inch machine. Uh, these Pro Mule MXs do have the double A arm suspension in the front and walking around here to the rear, they have a similar setup there in the rear. Uh, so this machine does have independent suspension in all four corners, which is one major reason we traded up over our 610. Uh, the other options that you might notice, uh, this one does have really good engine braking. Uh, it does have the, the locker, uh, has the power steering. And the little bit wider footprint really makes this machine a lot more comfortable out here on the trails. So more comparisons between this and our Mule 610. Uh, if you're looking on the Kawasaki website and can't find the 610, it's actually replaced by the SX. Uh, the SX is kind of the smallest machine in the lineup, and basically the only difference between an SX and a 610, uh, aside from a little bit of body work, is the SX now has fuel injection. But here on the MX, the mid-size machine, uh, there's also an FX, which is a full-size machine. But here, uh, this machine does have doors, which is really greatly appreciated. It helps keep the brush off your leg. Also has a tilt steering wheel right here, and uh, that power steering, which is really, really nice out here on any kind of rocky trails. Helps to keep your hands on the wheel and uh, a lot less fatigue there at the end of the day. This machine also has all sorts of cubbies for storage. You also have a little glove box over here that is lockable, so really appreciative there. Uh, you also have a really automotive style parking brake. Uh, this parking brake is actually really reminiscent of the earlier second gen Tacomas. Uh, if you had a manual transmission, you had a T-handle parking brake, very similar to that. Uh, you have a gear selector. Uh, one thing interesting about this gear selector is it doesn't have park. A lot of manufacturers are going away from park, but you still have your low range, high range, neutral, and reverse. 
Uh, you can also see here we mounted our controller for the winch right there, make it really easy to get to. This seat does pop up, giving you access to your battery, your fuel tank. You can check the oil right here and also your air box. So really, really easy to maintain. You also have this small little cubby over here on the passenger side. Uh, we have a first aid kit in ours mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of an empty hole over here. Uh, you can see it is not really secure from the elements, but you might be able to drop your lunch in there or something like that uh, if you needed a little bit of extra room. So overall, this machine, it, again, kind of like the 610, it's not really a speed demon, it's not a sports machine, but it is really great out here on the trails. Uh, again, these Duro tires are standard, really kind of aggressive for a standard tire on more of a basic utility machine. These machines start around $10,000, uh, around $1,000 more if you do want that power steering, which again, I would highly recommend. And uh, these machines do come with a three-year warranty, which is really, really good. A lot of other manufacturers are offering about six months of warranty. Uh, so three years is great. Now, with this being a utility machine, it does have a dump bed, but you do have to walk around to both sides to release the latches and actually dump it. So it is gas assisted, a little bit stuck here. There we go, gas assisted. Um, also gives you really good access to your engine. It is around a 700 cc engine. Uh, again, not a speed demon, but it is really quiet and really reliable out here on the trails. So closing the bed here, uh, walk around to the tailgate. One thing, unfortunately, the Kawasaki did not fix with these new side-by-sides is they do still have a dual lever that you have to release for your tailgate to come down. Now, the tailgate is really nice, much more sturdy, and uh, you can see here under our makeshift bed mat, it does actually have a diamond plate metal bed with really nice tie-downs here in the corner. So, again, really appreciative of that. Uh, I do wish it had a single lever tailgate, more similar to what you'd find on the pickup. But uh, overall, it is still a nice machine. We actually don't open our tailgate that much. We actually don't use the dump bed all that much. Uh, more or less, we haul chainsaws back here. We might haul our backpacks or our guns or whatever else. And this is a really good space for all of that. Also in the sides here, it does have little grooves to where if you wanted to run a board across, uh, like you might find in similar uh, pickups, and you can actually run those boards front to back and left to right. So if you want to kind of customize your machine further, you do have a lot of uh, options to do that. It also comes standard with a two inch hitch receiver. And uh, again, overall, this is not a super fancy machine, but it has been really nice for us. Uh, a lot of these features that you find here on this machine, you'd have to pay extra for going with a different manufacturer. And Kawasaki has all of this standard. So we were really appreciative of that. Again, this machine uh, starts around 10 grand if you don't want power steering, up to about 11,000 if you do want power steering. And they actually have a camo edition and the LE, which is kind of uh, a little bit fancier model with those aluminum wheels if you would want to trade up to that. But we really didn't see the point. Uh, this green looks at home here in the woods and it had a lot of the options that we wanted standard and the options that we added ultimately weren't that expensive. So I do plan on making a full review of this machine here pretty soon, but this is just kind of an initial walk around showing you kind of uh, the basics of the machine. If you have any questions, be sure to leave all that down in the comment section. I will read that and uh, include all of your thoughts and comments and questions there on our full review. But let me know what you think here. I really think that for the money, this Kawasaki Mule Pro MX uh, is really a nice machine. The midsize utility segment uh, it does kind of have a limited choice. A lot of the machines are kind of, uh, you know, the 50 inch wide or up to like a 64 inch wide and they get a lot longer than this. But up here in the woods, this machine really made a lot of sense for us. So thank you all very much for watching. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We'll catch you next time.